Hello, hola, merhaba. My name is Janelle and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my February TBR. Uh, it is a little bit late seeing as we're an entire week into February, but I got really sick with the flu and bronchitis and my daughter actually got the flu too and she's six months old. So I'm going to say that I don't feel too bad about this. It kind of like backtracked everything and I'm just starting to feel better. So here we are. I have already finished just one book and made a lot of progress in all the other ones. So sorry, cause I'm, it's really early in the morning. It's really dark outside. It's a Miami like doom and gloom kind of day where it's just gonna be raining all day. It's fine. Also, um, there's this like random balloon behind me because my sister turned 30 yesterday and I got her like the 3-0 balloons um, because I wanted to be really obnoxious. So now there's like a bunch of balloons floating around me, though you probably only can see that one and that's really funny. Um, but anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. The first book that I'm going to talk about is The Varlet and the Voyeur, and that is by Penny Reed and L.H. Causeway. This is book four in the it's rugby book four. So smart. Um, anyways, this actually has been my favorite book of the entire uh, series um, of the rugby series by both of them. Um, and it follows William Moore and Josie Cavanaugh. Uh, William is a rugby player for the Irish rugby team as all the, I think maybe except for one the first one um, but they've all been from the same team every male in the series every male protagonist because every book follows a different uh, guy and William just had a PR nightmare he's actually like one of or the most quiet and well-behaved uh, rugby players he doesn't really stir up much issues at all in the media in his personal life nothing and he is in the middle of a PR nightmare and he kind of needs someone to keep him on track with certain things about me giving away too much and um, Josie her parents have basically kicked her out of the house because she they think that she, she's too dependent on them and she's old enough that she can kind of branch out on her own and they want to see her you know succeed and figure things out on her own they feel like she won't be able to do that with them around all the time so um he needs someone she needs someone they end up living together and then obviously something happens from there but Josie's one of those amazing quirky female protagonists that I love so much and I'm talking like I've already read this because I, it's the only book that I finished this month in the middle of all the flu nonsense um and I really enjoyed it. So that was on my TBR and I finished it. So starting the month off strong, guys. All right, and then the next books that I'm going to talk about are all books that I have not started yet because most of them I have. And then also I'm planning on participating in the contemporary -athon, which starts next week. I believe it's from the 10th. It starts on the 10th and I don't know when the last day is. I want to say it's the 16th, but I could be wrong. Um, so these are not the books that are included in the contemporary -athon. If any of these could be used for any of those challenges, then I will use them. Um, but I don't think a lot of these could. Maybe the Varlet and the Voyeur could have been one of them. But I got too excited and I read it. I was really enjoying that book. But anyways, the first book, uh, I want to add more nonfiction to all of my TBRs. Um, and the first one is Feminism for the 99%, a manifesto. This is obviously a bit of nonfiction about feminism. I obviously, or maybe not obviously if you don't follow her, but I'm pretty sure you do, heard about this from Jean from Bookish Thoughts, or is it Jean's Thoughts? Because I think on Instagram she's Jean's Thoughts. Anyways, I can link her uh, channel down below, but she talked about this book a lot and um, it's a quick read how big are you sir or would you be a man 85 pages then the next book is protect the prince by jennifer Eastep. i want to read this in preparation for the third book that's going to come out i read the first book last year this is book two and honestly i i'm trying to think about what this series is about 
Jennifer Isop is more known the Elemental Assassin series. This series is called The Crown of Shadows. The first book was called Kill the Queen and I just really enjoyed the first one and I can't think I can't think of a good enough synopsis for the first one. I've had this book already for a while and I want to read the next one so it's really funny because I know that I loved it but I can't tell you what it's about which by the way I gave four stars to. Basically, Evie's able to get away and she ends up training with a like renegade group of assassins and starts to learn how to defend herself and realizes that if she wants to do what's right for herself for and for the kingdom then she's gonna have to kill the queen and that's basically the premise for the first book in the series the next book that i want to read is the queen's assassin by melissa de la cruz this book just came out two days ago on february 4th or like three days ago now I know that it's about, obviously, the Queen's Assassin, so his name is Cal, yeah, Kaladin Holt, um, Cal and Shadow, Shadow's of the female protagonist. I think it's dual perspectives, um, so I think the chapters alternate between Cal and Shadow. Um, Cal is the Queen's Assassin, and Shadow, I think, is like a lady's maid or like a lady-in-waiting to the Queen. I that's as far as I know. Obviously their paths intersect and the story is supposed to be about like lies, betrayal, fate, destiny. I don't know. Really excited about this. I haven't read a Melissa de la Cruz book in a really long time. I used to be obsessed with her Blue Bloods series. At least I think that's what it was called. And wow, wow, wow. Really enjoyed that. Uh, the next book actually is another nonfiction funnily enough and that is sapiens a brief history of humankind by yuval noah harari it's spoken highly about from barack obama um jared diamond and that's really all i needed to know it has really high reviews again i really wanted to increase my nonfiction intake this year but yeah i'm excited for this and then the next books that I'm going to show you are all books that I've already started and that I'm hoping to finish. So this book, I'm 70% of the way through. Um, actually, I had got, a, I think I paid like a dollar for the ebook before I saw this on Book Outlet. I don't think I need to talk about this because I'm pretty sure that everybody and their mother knows about A Crystal or Dark and Lonely. Beauty and the Beast retail, retelling female protagonist is like transported to another world wherein she's stuck in this like... Beauty and the Beast situation wherein the king now he's been cursed by an evil witch uh, to relive the same season after season while his kingdom is falling apart around him and I liked the twist on the beast aspect of it obviously I won't say if you haven't read it but as everyone knows the female protagonist in this has cerebral palsy and I have someone in my life that has that as well and so it was really interesting and just just fantastic to read about a female main character that has that i love that representation in here but anyways really enjoying this so far i'm hoping to finish it this month again i'm 70 percent of the way through um i need to take out this freaking sticker because how annoying the next book that i've started i started this back in oh no my bookmark i started this back in july uh, after Aleph was born, I'm 50 pages in and there's only, I think only, yeah, there's 68 pages. I have 18 pages left of this like itty bitty little book. I haven't finished it because after Aleph was born, I, I got it in my head that I really wanted to read this with her as in I would read it out loud when she had just finished nursing and stuff. And then I just didn't finish, but I'm sure that I'll finish that this month. And I didn't even talk about this. This is uh, Greta Th uh, Thunberg's No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference. It's a collection of her speeches. And I didn't realize that's what it was when I picked this up way, but way back when. It's incredibly repetitive and a lot of it are things that um, I, already, I already knew. So it's not like I'm learning anything new, but 
Um, I do love Greta and I support her cause and I think that what she's doing is hopefully transformational for us and for the planet. I think that she's reaching a lot of people with her message and what some people think is extremist behavior. I don't think so. But anyways, um, really loving this. And I'll finish, I'm, I'm sure that I'll finish it this month. The next book that I've started but haven't finished is Mrs. Salloway by Virginia Woolf. I need to see where I'm at. I already know how this ends. I had to read this for school and I think I got like 85 to 90% of the way through, skimmed the very end of it and then was like, okay, I'm good. I'm done. I don't need to finish this anymore because I think there were other things coming up. But I was, I've had it on my Goodreads for years on my currently reading shelf because I always had the intention of going back and finishing that last 10 to 15% whatever's missing um but I haven't so I I will do that I will do that the last book for this TBR is A Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness that's how much I've read this book I've been trying to read since we lived in New York it got lost it got found it got lost again got found again i don't know how i remembered to bring this with me to miami because all my other books are in boxes and storage this is book two in the all souls trilogy by deborah harkness i did review the first one a discovery of witches on my channel which i will happily link down below i haven't seen that video in years so i don't even know how oh god it's probably like the worst book review ever Maybe I won't link it down below. <laughs> uh, Shadow of Night picks up right where A Discovery of Witches left off. So here's the thing. I just finished watching the series A Discovery of Witches, which I really enjoyed. But because it's been so long since I read the first book, I'm confusing. It's like all like this in my head. What was originally from the book and what is specific to the movie. So I was thinking about purchasing the book or renting it from my library the audiobook version of a discovery of wishes and re-listening to it because obviously i know enough to be able to read shadow of night right but then there's like the specifics that i'm like was this from the show or was this from the book and i cannot remember i'm really enjoying this i never stopped enjoying this it just took me a really long time to read it because i misplaced it then i had to like get back into it again misplaced it again had to get back into it again it's just been a struggle but i'm hoping to finish it this month deborah harkness does a really good job at getting you situated and creating great atmosphere which is amazing but it's almost like she spent so much time that you the plot is is slow moving like there's not much action um and there wasn't really here until about 50 percent of the way through so it's starting to pick up a lot now, which is making it a lot easier to pick up. And I'm really excited to finally finish that freaking book because it has taken me a really long time. That's my February TBR, not including the contemporary on books that I will read. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was a little crazy. I'm happy that I could stop in the middle of my work day and talk about these. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you check out my other videos and that hopefully you like it and you hit the like button. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be great. I'm going to go now. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.